guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since I posted a video, but again, I got busy and I had to prioritize reading these books instead of making videos about them. Uh, but if you remember my last video, I reviewed a book called The Church in the French Era. This was the first book in a trilogy of books uh, that surveyed the history of Christianity in Canada. Now, today I'll be reviewing uh, the second volume in that trilogy, The Church in the British Era by John S. Moore. Now, before proceeding, I want to quickly explain uh, the periodization that this trilogy follows. Periodization, if you're unfamiliar with that term, is something that historians do to organize the past. However, it is something entirely constructed and reasoned out by the historian, not the historical subjects. It is not as if the French Canadians, who feature in the Church in the French Era, described their own time as the French Era. Anyway, this trilogy divides up Canadian history into three periods. The first is the French period, what they call the French era. It spans from about 1600 to 1763. The second is called the British era, which begins with the British conquest of New France in 1763 and ends with the creation of the Dominion of Canada in 1867. And the third is called the Canadian era, and this spans from Confederation in 1867 to the time uh, when that author wrote the book, which was in the 1980s. So, it will come as no surprise to you that the book I'm reviewing today focuses on the period between 1763 to 1867, also known as the British Era. So the author, John S. Moore, uh, does not state a thesis, uh, but he does emphasize certain themes. Perhaps the most salient point in this book is that church life in British North America was characterized chiefly by a strong denominationalism, and as a corollary to that, religious pluralism which might be better termed denominational pluralism. Denominations were largely unaware of developments among their Christian brethren, and even if they were aware, they were not particularly interested. Moore suggests that this denominationalism was in large part due to geographic isolation of settlements and the great distances between them. As a result, the only way to understand the church in Canada during this period, Moore claims, is by studying its growth region by region. Another important theme for Moir is what he calls the Canadianization, or the indigenization of the churches. Both these terms bear negative connotations and are kind of confusing, but what Moir is getting at is this idea of the Canadian churches becoming an expression of the Canadian setting or situation, and losing the obvious marks of European or old, old world character. I think that this is Moir's overarching interest in this book, because the first six chapters focus on the developments Moir believes would allow for, and later affect, Canadianization, and the latter six chapters show the struggles of Canadianization that the Church has faced. So you're probably wondering what Canadianization actually looks like. Well, the criteria for Canadianization for, for Moir mostly meant the development of a clergy born in Canada rather than Britain, and the weaning of the denominations from British support. Thus, the establishment of local bodies of church governance for the purposes of consolidation of organization and ordaining pastors would be considered a step towards Canadianization, whereas a church remaining dependent on their denominational colleagues back in England would demonstrate the opposite. Another step towards Canadianization uh, would be the development of church journals or newspapers, such as the Christian Guardian, which was a Methodist newspaper, um, and it played a prominent role in the controversies uh, surrounding the clergy reserves, which was just a controversy over a piece of government legislation that set aside one-seventh of all crown land grants for the support of the Angl Anglican clergy. <clears throat> one of the major interests of this period is a tense relationship between Anglicanism and the other denominations, as well as a confused relationship between church and state. Anglicanism was, of course, the established church in England, and it had been legally established in Nova Scotia. By the time an attempt was made to establish Anglicanism in Upper Canada, which is modern-day Ontario, legislators realized the imprudence of such a course of action, since Anglicans were not only just one church among several, but they were not even the most numerous. Pressure from conservatives and from high church Anglicans resulted in Anglicans being given numerous legal privileges, but not being legally established. These privileges included, for example, the exclusive right to perform marriage ceremonies and uh, the land endowments to provide income for the church, such as the previously mentioned clergy reserves. 
The Presbyterians, uh, Methodists, and Baptists in Upper Canada fought against uh, these Anglican privileges for decades. And these, some of these controversies lasted for decades, up until about the 1850s. Uh, sometimes they, they fought against these together, sometimes they fought separately, depending on the, the issue and their kind of shifting alliances. The final result of this, uh, which Moir would also see as a sign of Canadianization, was the official disestablishment of Anglicanism. Or maybe it would be more accurate to say the legal disprivileging of Anglicanism, so that all denominations had an equal standing. The decision that the established churches of Britain, which would include Anglicans and Presbyterians, uh, would not be established in Canada was a major step in Canadianization and also meant that Canada was officially and legally religiously plural, despite the fact that in nearly the entire population outside of Quebec um, identified as one of only four Protestant denominations, which are Anglicans, Methodists, Presbyterians, and Baptists. A similar sign of gradual Canadianization in Moir's eyes would be the slow move toward union among various branches of a single denomination. So Moir notes that Presbyterians, for example, were deeply divided prior to Confederation and existed in numerous synods or groups that didn't really get along well with each other. The same was also true for Methodists and Baptists. By the 1850s, attempts to consolidate these groups and to put aside old differences was becoming common among these three denominations. These slow and sometimes abortive movements towards unity would bear a bumper crop of fruit in the early life of the Dominion of Canada when divided groups of each denomination would come together to form a unified front and would, from that point on, uh, become major influencers of uh, culture in Ontario, especially. Meanwhile, Moir suggests that the overcoming of such differences was another demonstration by Canadian churches that European influence was waning and the churches were becoming truly local expressions of the church. This is not to suggest that Europe and even the U.S. no longer influenced Canadian Christians. They most certainly did. But the church in Canada became exactly that, Canadian churches, instead of mere extensions from Europe or the United States. As far as Moore is concerned, he believes that the development of the churches reflected the gradual shift in Canadian society from a pioneer society to what he calls a settler or settled society. Since pioneer societies are dependent on the society that sent pioneers, it makes sense that the church in such a society would depend on its parent church, as it were, for sustenance. As society took root and settled into its own rhythms and ways of doing things, its own culture, the churches reflected that. While I'm not crazy about the terms Canadianization or indigenization, I think Moir is correct in his assessment and portrayal of that process. Overall, while this book is not without its flaws or um, obvious quirks of the author's worldview and the culture he grew up in, it is a good account of the history of Christianity in Canada between the British conquest and confederation for students, pastors, and interested persons. So thanks for watching this video, guys. Stay tuned for the next one. It'll be on the final uh, book in this trinity, or trinity, <laughs> the final book in this trilogy, um, the Canadian era. So I'll have that coming out soon. Thanks, guys.